Why is everyone quitting Etsy? It seems like these days everyone is just so mad at Etsy. If you spend some time browsing YouTube, Reddit, or community forums, you'll see that there's a lot of frustration centered around Etsy right now. Things even got so bad that just a few months ago, there was this organized Etsy strike that was put together by a bunch of Etsy sellers that were unhappy with the platform. So what I think this group was doing was organizing a time where they could all put their shops on vacation mode all at once. And this was supposed to send some kind of message to the higher ups at Etsy. So yeah, there was a lot of anger at the time and I don't think it's fully gone away even today. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about where I think all this frustration and anger is coming from, whether it's even worth it to start an Etsy shop today, and what I'm personally doing with my own shop. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. Let's get right into it. So like I said, if you take a look around, you'll see that there's a lot of anger in the community. It seems like everyone is as angry as a Jigglypuff with a sleepy audience. And if you really think about it and try to get to the root of the problem, you'll probably come to the same conclusion as I did. And that's that people are so angry because their shops are not meeting their expectations. Because if you really think about it, right? If your shop was making millions of dollars a year, there's no way you would be angry at Etsy. You'd be super happy. The only reason why so many people are angry with the platform now is because there seems to be a larger amount of people whose shops are not meeting their expectations. So why is this? To answer this question, you have to acknowledge that Etsy is a growing platform. The number of new people who are shopping on the Etsy marketplace is increasing every year. And not only that, the number of sellers are increasing too. Let's take a look at some statistics. So let's take a look at Etsy's revenue from 2012 to now. They've gone from having a revenue of $74 million in 2012 to $2.3 billion last year. So if you were only to look at the revenue numbers, you'd think that things are going pretty well, right? I mean, Etsy is selling more than ever before, so that must mean that sellers are profiting, right? And I really think they did for a certain amount of time. If you were lucky enough to have an established store prior to 2019, depending on your niche, I'm willing to bet that a large amount of sellers were profiting huge during this boom. But as with all markets, the longer this remains unoptimized, the more it's going to attract people who are looking to make money. So before I dive deeper into that, I wanna talk about this one feature that is unique to Etsy that I think is contributing to the problem. And that's that they show a shop sales numbers to the public. No other platform or marketplace does this in such a direct way. And I think it has some pros, but it also has some cons with it. So the one thing that I can think of that's positive is that it provides a social proof for the customers. If you're browsing on Etsy as a customer and you see an item that you like, seeing that a store has a thousand sales is gonna give you the confidence to buy that item without worrying. So that's a good thing, right? And I think that's a big reason why Etsy has been growing as a platform so quickly. But the downside to this is that this number is also publicly available for all your competitors to see, and it really encourages copying successful products. For example, let's look at this Etsy shop called Personalized Bee Co. Going through their page, you can see that they sell personalized acrylic prints, and they have about 38,000 sales. And if you scroll down, you'll see that they opened their shop just two years ago in 2020. Scrolling back up, if you look at the price of their items, you'll see that they're all around the $16 to $30 range. So even if you're being really conservative and you assume that the average price of an item sold is around $20, with some simple math, you can see that they made in the neighborhood of $760,000 in two years, or about $380,000 a year. If you're someone looking to make money, and let's be honest, most people are looking to make some extra money. If you see this shop and you have any experience in making acrylic prints, or even if you're just willing to learn how to make them, you'd be very tempted to open a competitor shop and just copy all their items. And to be honest, this is exactly how I got started on Etsy. I was just browsing Etsy one day and I saw a sticker shop that was doing really well in a specific niche. And I thought to myself that I can make better stickers than this shop. So I opened up Google and I typed in how to make stickers and that was the start of my shop. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to do this. I'm sure lots and lots of people had the same start to Etsy as I did. And for me, I think that's the biggest reason why there's been such a huge increase in sellers in the last few years. It all comes down to the numbers in this chart. In 2012, Etsy had 800,000 sellers, and today that number is up to 7.5 million. More sellers leads to more competition, and competition drives down prices, which kills profits, which kills businesses. And I think that's where all the frustration is stemming from. So in my opinion, it's not really Etsy's fault. It's a thing that happens with all markets. When there's money to be made, it leads to oversaturation and increased competition. And the only thing you can do if you're in this for the long term is to try to rise above the competition. So now the question is, how do we do that? How do we rise above the competition? And I've been reading a lot of business books over the past year, trying to find an answer for this question. 
And from what I've seen, there's three main ways. Number one is to create something new. Some of the shops that I see that are struggling are literally just carbon copies of a more successful shop. From what I've seen, doing this doesn't really work because if you think about it, when your store is an exact copy of a more successful shop, why wouldn't a customer looking for the product that you're selling just go to the more successful shop to buy the item? When your items are exactly the same, there's no reason for a customer to choose your shop and that's why these shops generally struggle right from the beginning. The second way to escape competition is to improve upon an existing product in a way that customers care about. So instead of copying an item or a listing directly, try to make some kind of improvement on the product. For example, if you have experience making leather goods and you see a successful shop that's selling leather camera straps, instead of just copying their straps exactly, you can add another feature like personalizing a name on it or different colors, something that can make customers choose your shop over theirs. And I found that a third way to escape the competition is to create a strong brand. Branding is something that I think a lot of businesses, especially ones that are on Etsy, don't think enough about. But I think it's so important because a lot of the time when a customer is presented with two very similar items, that customer is simply gonna choose the one whose branding resonates with them the most. This is a big reason on why I spend so much time on the branding for my own shop, and I think it's really been helping long term. If you're interested, I did make a video on branding where I dive a little deeper into what my thought process is when I'm coming up with a brand. I'll leave it in the description below if you're interested. The truth is, is that selling on Etsy today is a lot harder than it was just three years ago. There's more sellers than there's ever been and every day it gets harder and harder just to stand out from the competition. Shops that are doing the same thing that they were three years ago might find themselves struggling today in this new environment. And I feel like this is where all the anger and frustration is coming from. If this is happening to you, I think it's a really good time to take a deep breath take a look around, make a plan and find a way to adapt because good businesses are the ones that can be flexible and adapt with changing times. So with all that being said about the increased competition and oversaturation, I wanna answer a question that I still get all the time and that's if it's still worth it to start an Etsy shop today. And it might not surprise you, but my answer is still the same. And that's if you're just starting out, I still highly recommend starting on Etsy over any other platform. When you're starting a store on Etsy, you're tapping into a huge customer base that Etsy has built over the last decade. And all you really have to do is figure out how to make a product that people will like. And it's weird because every time I recommend Etsy to people online, I always get responses like, but Tim, I heard Etsy is horrible. I saw on the news that everyone on Etsy is going on strike and the fees are so high and they treat their sellers so poorly. Why would you recommend a site like that? And my response is always, what is the alternative? Let's break down the high fee argument because I think that's the main thing sellers are angry at right now. And it was actually the number one reason for the Etsy strike just a few months ago. So for those of you who don't know, Etsy recently increased their fees from 5% up to 6.5%. And I may get a lot of hate in the comments for saying this, but I think that's still very reasonable. Let's take a look at other marketplaces just for comparison. So Etsy charges 20 cents for each listing and has increased their fees to 6.5%. If you look at a site like eBay, you'll see that they charge 30 cents for each product and 12.9% on most categories. You can see here that it's even up to 15% on certain categories like women's apparel or jewelry. Looking at Amazon, they charge 15% on most categories with a 40 cent minimum. But you also require a selling plan, which is another monthly cost, as well as fulfilled by Amazon fees if you're gonna go that route too. So just by looking at these numbers, you'll see that Etsy is actually the lowest amongst the three biggest marketplaces. And I know some people are gonna suggest starting on your own website first, but if you do that, it's just a lot more work to get started. Not only do you have to come up with a product that you think people are gonna like, you have to spend time, money, and energy on building your own customer base from nothing as well. It's really great if you can go this route, and I'm not saying it's impossible at all. I've seen a lot of stores start from their own website and become very successful. But for most people, because the journey is so long and so difficult, most of the people that I see go this route give up before they even get their first sale. And that's because it's just so hard. I really think that out of all the marketplaces available today, Etsy is still the best overall in terms of fees, ease of use, and how fast you can get a store up and running. If you disagree and you still think Etsy is this big evil corporation, let me know like what's the alternative. Because from what I've seen, People who are quitting Etsy, most of them are straight up just quitting their entire businesses altogether. And that's something I'm really not interested in. So yeah, if you know something better than Etsy, put it down in the comments. With that being said, I'd like to give a quick update on what's going on with my own shop since it's been a really long time since my last video. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that last August, I had this amazing month where I sold over $9,000. 
But right after that, visits and sales to my shop have been slowly declining. And it's sad to say, but I've never hit that $9,000 since. I'm still bringing in a decent amount of money every month, but in my particular niche, I've seen a huge amount of increased competition and just people who've been copying my shop. For the time being, I've shifted most of my energy into my own website. And I'm trying to learn how to market my own website over my Etsy shop using Facebook and Instagram ads. I'm not quitting or abandoning my Etsy shop by any means. My Etsy shop is still where the bulk amount of my sales are coming from. So that's something I don't wanna cut off completely. But yeah, I'm not giving up yet. I actually reinvested some of my profits into new equipment. For those of you who don't know, I was using a desktop printer and a couple of Silhouette Cameos as my equipment before. And I recently upgraded to a Roland BN20 and a Graphtech cutter and it's made a huge improvement on the quality of stickers that I'm making. Like I'm making commercial quality stickers now. I'm still figuring out how all the new equipment works with all the new software that I have to learn, but I'm really liking it so far. But yeah, my shop isn't booming like it was last year, and it could be for a lot of reasons. Like I mentioned, it could be the increased competition. It could be that COVID brought in a lot of new users and that's starting to trickle down now. Or it could be because of what's going on with the global economy. I mean, inflation is at an all time high now. Everything seems so expensive people are having trouble finding work. Like all of these things could be what's contributing to what's happening to our stores. But something that's really helped me on my journey so far is to try not to get angry at this stuff. You really have no control over any of it. And no matter how angry you get, nothing is going to change. The only thing that you can do is to focus your energy and time on things that you have control over. And for now, I'm just focused on improving my shop in any way I can and trying to build my own customer base. I always try to remember that I have a choice in what platform that I'm on. And just like with any choice, there's pros and cons to every decision. You just have to weigh them out for yourself. But that's it for the video, guys. If you like this one, you might like the video I made on the three things million dollar Etsy shops do. It's a video where I look at the top shops on Etsy, all of them making over a million dollars. And I broke down three things that I found that they all have in common. If you're interested, I'll link it up right over here. The things in that video I've implemented in my own shop with some success, and I'm sure it might help your shop too. But yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found it useful. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.